So most of the world considers the best practice of conservation planning in any around the world was the Great Barrier Reef Rezoning. And we went from 4.7% to 33% uh, conserved. In fact, underpinning that was maps like this, and that's a map of the 70 kinds of reef and interregional areas. So they divided the whole Great Barrier Reef into 70, if you like, ecosystem types. And one of the key objectives was, could we please have at least 20% of each of those things somewhere in a no-take zone? So if you were to boil down the rezoning of the Great Barrier Reef into a single sentence, that's it. Get you 20% of every colour on that map. The original zoning of 5% was highly not comprehensive and poorly represented. Many of those colours were not in any green part of the original zoning. Some had a lot in the green part, so it was inequitable. So that's what they wanted to do. They used the software that we've produced called MarkSan to do that. And most of the world now see that as the pinnacle of conservation planning at a global scale. Many countries, from the United Kingdom to South Africa to Brazil uh, to the United States and Canada, are adopting this model as they start to plan their marine reserve systems. And they're using the software that my group developed here about a kilometre away in the University of Adelaide, in the University of Adelaide in a building that does not exist anymore. It was red, it was brick, and it was falling down. <laughs> and so that software is basically rezoning most of the planet in the marine sector, and actually a lot in terms of forest. And how does it work? That's what I'm going to tell you. Basically, you take a place like that, and you divide it up into, in this case, 17,000 little bits, which are either reefs or places between reefs. So imagine this divided into 17,000 bits. What's your problem? The problem is to decide of those 17,000 bits, which ones no take and which ones not no take. And the rules are quite simple. What we like to do is make sure 20% of every colour is in the system. They also had other data about where the turtles breed, where the dugongs feed. They didn't always set a 20% target. For dugongs and seagrass, they set a much higher target because it's a vulnerable ecosystem. And then pick some of those 17,000 so you meet your conservation objectives. Most importantly, using this set of data. So there's a whole heap of biological data and biophysical data. But then, they spend a lot of time, although it took me years to convince them to do it, they collect a lot of data of recreational and commercial fishing information. This is how much money a variety of commercial fishing interests make in a section of the Great Barrier Reef. And the darker the pink, the more money they make. And you can see there's some reefs they make a lot of money off. There's some areas between reefs they make a lot of money off. There's other places they make very little money off. And that is a cost. And the software minimises the cost of the reserve system. So its first priority is to get 20% of everything. And its second priority is to make sure that the reserves do not overlap those pink things unless there's no other way you could possibly do it to get your 20% target. That's systematic conservation planning. That's how Marksan works. That's how the software that, worked, that produced your state government promotional plans has worked and will work and can be adopted and changed through consultation as the development process goes on. We train, train most of the state federal agencies in Australia to use this software. And there are a couple of other pieces of software in the world and they basically work in exactly the same way and they generate roughly the same results because the principles are solid. Um, but the most important thing, I think, when I, for example, were talking to the, the recreational commercial fishers in Morton Bay about the rezoning there, I was very honest to them and I said, you know, we're trying to get 10% of every habitat type here. If you tell us honestly where you fish and where you spend your recreational time and where you spend make money, we'll go out of our way to achieve the conservation goals, the biodiversity goals, and knowing you as the as possible. And uh, once I had explained that to them, this was a group of 30 representatives from all the fishing groups, they were a little bit more comfortable. Unfortunately, it's hard sometimes for governments to explain that. And as I say, the, the software that's used is ours. You could use other software. Um, and uh, it's, there's over 50 papers in the international scientific literature that use this software to build marine reserve systems. Uh, and a piece of other people to try and get up the nose.
and I might add that I make no money at all out of this. It's free. You can download it today. The fishing industry can download it tomorrow, and they can run their analysis themselves if they wish. If they ever want somebody to use it, it causes me pain because they email me and say, this data file didn't work. Why did I get this error message? And so actually, I don't really want anybody to use it. <laughs> not quite, not true. Sure. Okay. I'll give you a quick idea. This is again just to distance itself from South Australia. I don't, I might add that I have, other than knowing that we help train some of the people in South Australia to use the software, I have not been involved in the rezoning in South Australia at all. Uh, obviously, some of us, we don't do that sort of stuff. I don't know where their proposed reserves are. I can't tell you anything about the, the fish stocks in South Australia because the sea scares me enormously and I don't really want to go in. <laughs> every, 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 it's not this, I have nightmares about this, and then I No, every fish that's bigger than me, every fish that's bigger than me scares me. In fact, the fish that's bigger than I can fit on my plate scares me. So I think have no vested interest in this, other than the fact that I want the science to be done properly and the outcomes to be delivered for minimum impact. Um, and the Californians have used it, and of course it can be used at different scales and different places. This is California. They divided up the world into nautical square miles because they don't understand metric. And they had thousands <laughs> of layers of fish data. They had lots of fishing data. <coughs> so this is maps of fishing effort. They put that into the computer. They put the information about where the sea otters are, where the white abalone are, where the kelp beds are. And they basically do exactly the same thing. The same thing's been repeated here, there, everywhere, all around the world. And they come up with plans. In this case, you know, people often say, well, we don't know where every little mollusk is. We don't know where every kind of algae is. I don't know how many algae there are in South Australia. A thousand, probably going for that. At least a thousand seaweed somewhere out there. We don't know where they all are. They actually did their planning almost entirely based on biophysical features. Hardly any fish distributions, but just the rough things you could remotely sense. And often that delivers a reasonable reserve system because it's the water depth, the water speed, the temperature of the water and the structures underneath the water that often determine much of the biodiversity. So a lot of people say we can't build a marine reserve system until we know everything. That's not true. You can build a marine reserve system virtually without putting your head into the ocean. Ultimately, as they did with the Great Barrier Reef, they started off with 5% and they turned it up into, uh, somebody's going to vote about something, they turned up into 50%, uh, 33% and new information was used in that region. So if new information comes along, obviously, you can update what you need to do. And they're the kind of maps I can get. And I suppose I won't labour it too much, but what the software delivers is output that tells you how important it is to get any particular place in the reserve system to meet your goals of being cost-effective and delivering comprehensive coverage of marine biodiversity. And they then become decision support into the process of the government forming maps that then should be decision support into the community consultation process. And it can go backwards and forwards as long as you like. I suppose it can go backwards and forwards forever. And this is just to annoy people. This is, there is maps in this. This is the maps. The maps that drives the marine zoning software is the maps that runs the airline schedule. It's the maps that builds the buildings going on in Adelaide. It's just basic optimization maps. Um, ultimately, software only does so much, and then social and economic processes come in place on top of that. Okay, where are we in Australia? Now I'm going to talk about okay, we've, some of the rezonings that have occurred, and then I'm going to briefly talk about the impact on biodiversity and fisheries, and I'm going to open up for questions. Um, the federal government. That, that, that's the way the federal government sees the world, so it's not the way you see the world. You get this little strip around the coast of three nautical miles. They see this huge area. Um, some of the states have done some marine park design. The federal government has done the southeast, and they did it, I think, three or four years ago. They didn't use the systematic planning principles, and they ended up with a very, very poor reserve system that conserved 8% of that region. But we can tell it's a bad reserve system because of the entire coastal shelf, the entire coastal shelf, all the stuff where people fish and drill for oil, one half of 1% was conserved. That is not a comprehensive or representative yeah. reserve system. Oh. Morton Bay, the little area next to Brisbane, very small area, but with 
200,000 recreational fishes managed to conserve about 10% of every habitat type and conserve 15% of the bay, having only half a percent conserved before then. Um, and that process happened um, two or three years ago, and the monitoring data is still coming in from that. And the southwest, our group has done a plan for the southwest zone. I might show you a picture of that later. Um, I won't flick to it now. That brown area of the southwest, it includes all the way from Pangle Island to Geraldton and beyond. We did a plan for that. We used 1,894 biological data layers, and we used 47 industry data layers, everywhere from a trawl fishery to recreational fishery to the oil and gas industry. All were put into the software to get these outcomes, but minimising the impact on all those users. Okay. 